Hey, this is Josh, and today we're working on the greatest common factor. Now, usually, the way this is taught is through a method using prime factorization to find the greatest common factor, and so that's the method I want to use for this lesson. Okay, so let's just start off with the top one and kind of work our way through it. As always, I have a 40 and a 60. Now, I'm hoping you've watched my video on prime factorization because I'm gonna go through that part kind of fast, okay? Um, I wanna get down to my factors so that I can figure out what the greatest common factor actually is for this thing. So I have two and 20, two and 10, two and five. So I have two times two times two times five. If that was too fast, again, watch my video on prime factorization. All I did was I just factored out the primes and now I'm rewriting them. A 60 is a two times a 30, two times 15, three times five. So I have a two and a two and a three and a five, okay? And now in order to find the greatest common factor, what we need to do is pull out something where we have an equal amount in both. And what I mean by that is we need to pull out equals, I guess you could say. And the way I like to do it is I like to visually draw this with students so that they see the connection between the two numbers. So if we take a two from this guy, we take a two from this guy. And because these are factors, we're gonna put that multiplication sign in between. I'm gonna take out another two and another two. And what else, do I have another two? I don't. Do I have a three on this side? I don't. But I do have some fives and so I can pull that one out as well. Because again, we're looking for the greatest common factor. What things do they have in common? And the greatest number that we can create. So by pulling out all of the ones where you have one on each side, the, you're, what you're doing is you are creating factors when, that when multiplied will give you the greatest common factor between this guy and this guy. Two times two is four, four times five is 20. And so that would be your answer, which if you think about it, you know, that sounds about right. You know, usually it's a number that's kind of higher up on one of these factor trees because a 20 goes into 40 two times and a 20 goes into 60 three times. So it really is kind of like the biggest number that you can come up with factor, I guess you could say that will fit into both of these numbers that you started with. Alrighty, so I'm hoping that part starts to make sense. Now I'm just gonna do one where there's three parts so you can kind of see what happens when there's three. And then I added in some variables here just because those guys start to show up as well in Algebra 1 and it's just good practice to kind of start seeing those things. When you have three of them, you're just gonna make three factor trees. So the 12 is what? Two and six. Again, I like to start with my twos. That's just the way I do it because I think that it's a lot easier. If I do four times three, now I got two, two and three over here. I don't know. For me, it just looks a little wonky, but if that's the way you do your work, I'm okay with it, right? Whatever's going to help you get these right. Six is two times three and I'm done. I have a two and a two and a three. This guy, 18, Two times nine, three times three, so I have a two times a three times a three. If it helps you when you're doing these to put a barrier in between, you can. Sometimes when the numbers get kind of big, I see students and they're writing all of these. Oops, did I wipe that? Uh, they're, they, um, they write these so close together that they lose track of like what came from what and they start making up their own factor numbers and stuff. So be careful if you need to make some wiggly lines between them or just kind of space these out a little bit further, then that's what I would do. Uh, I can't divide by two. Oh, but I can divide by three and that's just a seven. So I have a three and a seven. So what can I pull from all three of them? Well, really not much. I can't pull a two from all of them. I can't pull a seven. I can pull a three and a three and a three, but really that's about it. Um, you know, and, and then sometimes, you know what, sometimes that happens, okay? And, and it looks kind of weird. 
Um, but if you just have one number that comes out of all of them, then that's your greatest common factor. It's the biggest number that can go into all three of these situations. And if you think about it, like you have a three here and a seven here, so there really isn't a number that's bigger that you could put here or somewhere in here that could be multiplied to make a 21. Okay, so let's move on to that last guy over here and wrap this thing up. I'll rewrite it here. We got 6a to the third b and 4a squared b. I always recommend doing the numbers first. 2 times 3. This guy is 2 times 2. And then working with these ones separately. Okay, so what can I pull from the numbers, right? And you got to look at this thing as all one big deal over here, okay? So we have this guy versus this guy, or this guy and this guy. Um, the greatest common number that I can pull out of both of them is a two. But now let's look at the a's, okay? I have a times a times a, and a times a. So how many a's can I pull out? Well, I can pull out an a and an a to get a a. I can pull out a a and an a to get a A. I know I'm kind of writing over my own work, but whatever, you're getting it, right? And then I'm gonna go B and B to get a B. And so whether or not there's variables, you just treat them just like as if they were numbers, okay? The nice part is you usually don't have to do too much work when it comes to doing anything with them. Most of your work is within the actual numbers. And then we just condense this thing if we can. Okay, sometimes your teacher will say, hey, this is good enough, you're getting the lesson, but sometimes they want you to rewrite it as 2a squared b as the greatest common factor. Which again, makes sense, right? Two is the biggest number that goes into those two values. a squared is the biggest I can get into both of these. And then there's just one unit of b, so yeah, you know, b is a factor and it should be represented as well. Okay, so I hope this helps you understand the whole greatest common factor thing. If not, send me some questions, but check out my other videos on prime factorization because that definitely is a part of this and it should definitely help you kind of work through some of these problems. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you around.